In this video, I'm going to give you 10 practical ways to easily save thousands of dollars on your wedding. And if you stick around until the end, I have a bonus tip that will not only save you money, it will save you a ton of time. Tip number one is to avoid wedding venues where you're required to use their preferred vendors. Some wedding venues will hand out a preferred vendor list to couples who book with them as a way to help you find vendors that the venue trusts and has already worked with, but you're still allowed to bring in your own vendors and you're not required to use the vendors from their list. The venue's just handing out that preferred list to help couples who might not know where to start. However, there are many other venues that hand out that list, and once you sign a contract, you are required to use those vendors and only those vendors. This can have a huge effect on your wedding budget and not in a good way. For example, some of the wedding venues that I have worked at, they have exclusive partnerships with a single caterer, and they are the most expensive caterer in the area. But many of the couples don't realize this until months after signing the contract when they start planning their menu. And by then, it's too late because you're months into wedding planning and you've already signed a contract. I recommend asking this question right from the start when you're looking for a venue. Ask if they have a preferred vendors list and then ask if you're required to use those vendors or if it's okay to bring in whoever you want. And if you really want to book with a venue who has a list that you're required to use, I recommend getting all of the pricing info from those other vendors before you get locked into a contract with the venue. This way you know exactly what you're getting yourself into and what everything's going to cost. Tip number two is to DIY some or all of your wedding flowers. Doing your own wedding flowers can save you a lot of money, but just keep in mind that you will be trading your time for the money that you're saving. But to give you an idea of just how much money you can save by doing your own wedding flowers, we took $36, went to Costco, and bought two dozen roses, a big bunch of baby's breath, and a pack of green eucalyptus, and that was enough to make one bridal bouquet, four bridesmaids bouquets, and four boutonnieres, all for $36. We made a video showing exactly how we made these bouquets, and I'm going to put a link to that video in the description down below. Tip number three is to limit the options at the bar. By ditching the hard alcohol and mixed drinks and only serving beer and wine, you can easily save $500 to $1,000 on your bar costs alone. My wife and I did this for our wedding, and it was a huge money saver that nobody complained about. Now, if you don't like the idea of serving only beer and wine at your wedding, consider limiting the mixed drink options to two signature cocktails instead of a full bar. This won't save you as much money as the beer and wine only wedding, but it will still lower your costs and allow you to put that money into another part of the budget. And to save even more money on the bar costs, consider offering an open bar for an hour or two and then making it a cash bar for the rest of the night. Or give everybody a two drink limit with the option to buy more drinks with their own money for the rest of the night. I've been to weddings that did all of the above ideas and I had no complaints whatsoever. Tip number four is to have an oh crap, I forgot that fund. This tip is not necessarily going to save you money on any one specific item, but it is definitely going to help keep you on budget and stop you from spending more money than you had planned on spending. Once you have worked out a budget and you know exactly how much money you have to spend, I recommend taking 10 to 15% of that total and putting it into this, oh crap, I forgot that fund. 15% of your budget might sound like a lot of money, but there are so many unexpected little items that come up during the wedding planning process. You're going to thank me later if you put this money aside now before you start deciding on where the money's going to go. Some of the expenses that this fund might be helpful for are tips for any wedding vendors that you want to tip on the wedding day, taxes and surcharges, delivery fees, vendor meals, overtime, dress or suit alterations, postage for invitations and save the dates, and wedding day gifts for family members and the wedding party. These are just a few of the many expenses that can pop up during the wedding planning process. By setting aside that 10 to 15%, you'll be a lot less stressed when those expenses start coming up. Tip number five is to skip anything that requires extra servers. Consider going with a buffet dinner instead of a plated meal that is brought to the table. A buffet dinner is going to require a lot less staff than a plated meal or a family style meal. On average, there needs to be about one server for every 15 guests when it comes to a plated meal. There needs to be about one server for every 20 guests with a family-style meal, but with a buffet meal, you only need about one server for every 30 guests. So by doing a buffet meal, you can cut the number of servers needed by about 50%. You would need to ask your caterer for the exact numbers, but we have found that on average, wedding caterers charge couples about $50 per hour per server needed. So you could easily save yourself close to $1,000 by going with a buffet style meal for your wedding. Tip number six is to get creative with what you're offering for dessert. 
Big extravagant wedding cakes typically cost a lot of money, which is fine if that's one of your wedding priorities, but if you're looking to save money in the dessert department, here are a few budget ideas to get you started. If you want to serve cake at your wedding, but you don't want the high price per slice that often comes with these cakes, I highly recommend checking out the Costco Sheet Cakes. These cakes are amazing and will only cost you about 50 cents per serving. And if you want something besides cake, I recommend checking out places like Sam's Club or Costco for cupcakes and other single serving desserts. For example, Sam's Club sells a box of mini cheesecake bites that will only cost you about 28 cents per serving. And the best way to save a lot of money on your wedding desserts is to have a DIY cookie table. This is where you get some family members and friends to bake or purchase their favorite kind of cookie. You set out all the plates on a table and let guests pick and choose whatever they want. I'd also recommend putting out some small to-go boxes. This way guests can take home a few cookies and this acts as your wedding favor which saves you even more money. We made another video that covers the top 10 ways to save money on your wedding desserts. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description below. Tip number seven is coming up next, but I wanted to say that if you're getting value from this video and want more money-saving wedding tips like these, please consider subscribing to our channel below. Tip number seven is having a smaller wedding party. Having a smaller wedding party can easily save you hundreds of dollars. Bridesmaids bouquets cost on average about $100 each and boutonnieres for groomsmen cost an average of $15 each. So if you have a wedding party that includes eight bridesmaids and eight groomsmen, you're going to spend about $920 on flowers alone. And if you plan on buying your wedding party small thank you gifts to hand out on the wedding day morning and you spend an average of about $30 per gift, that's another $480. So you're looking at about $1,400 just for flowers and small gifts alone. By decreasing the size of your wedding party to three people on each side, this is an instant savings of about $875. Tip number eight is sending out digital wedding invitations and save the date cards instead of mailing physical invites through the mail. This can easily save you between $500 and $1,000 for every 100 invitations that you are planning on mailing. The typical wedding invitation suite includes the actual invitation, the RSVP card and return envelope, and multiple insert cards that can include details about the reception, directions to the venue, things to do in the area, and the wedding registry. Then you have the expenses like envelopes and decorative bands or seals, plus the actual postage for the invitation suite and the postage for the RSVP return envelope. Postage alone is going to cost you about $150 to $300 per 100 invitations. There's no way around it. When you add up all these expenses, physical invitations will most likely cost you a lot of money. And some of the bigger wedding magazines like The Knot and Brides recommend putting $1,200 to $2,000 aside for wedding invitations and postage alone. That is a lot of money that could be spent on other parts of the wedding day or money that you could put into savings. That is why we recommend going the digital route if you're looking for ways to trim your budget. Sending out digital invitations and using a free wedding website to collect and track your RSVPs will cost you nothing. But if you really have your heart set on seeing a beautiful printed wedding invitation, consider printing just a few for yourself, your parents and grandparents, and then send digital invites to the rest of your guest list. You can design the digital invite yourself using a free Canva account, or you can purchase a template for a few dollars and simply add in your information. I'm putting a link to a few Canva templates that you can use down below in the description. Tip number nine is to purchase some of your bigger ticket items like wedding dresses and wedding rings on handmade markets like Etsy. We have worked with couples who have saved thousands of dollars by shopping on sites like this. You'll find a big variety of wedding dresses that fall between the $150 and $300 range on Etsy. And to narrow down your search, just type in wedding dress in the search bar and then filter by price. You can put in your max price to make sure your search results fit within your budget. We've also put together a blog post featuring some of our favorite Etsy shops that sell wedding dresses. I'll leave a link to that post down in the description below. And when it comes to wedding rings, Etsy is a goldmine for beautiful rings with unique designs. And the best part is that many of these rings can be purchased for between $20 and $100. And again, when doing your search, just filter by price to ensure that you're seeing rings that fit within your budget. I've also put together a blog post featuring some of the best wedding ring deals on Etsy. That link is also in the description below. I have also talked to many couples who have purchased dresses, suits, and wedding rings on Amazon. Just like Etsy, Amazon is going to have a lot of options that will work with almost any budget. But one thing I recommend if shopping for your items on Amazon is to stick with Prime items only. 
Amazon has amazing deals, but if you buy from a third party, you run the risk of not being able to return the item very easily. A few brides in our community warned that returning items from third party sellers on Amazon was a total headache and that refunds took a really long time. So for peace of mind, I would only shop with Prime for dresses and rings. We included some of the best finds from our community in the link down below in the description. Tip number 10 is to invite fewer people. The number one decision you will make that has the biggest effect on your wedding budget is the amount of people that you invite to your wedding. By the time you factor in meals, alcohol, favors, table decor, invitations, and many other smaller items, the average wedding guest will cost you between $200 and $250 per person. That means if you have a guest list of 150 people and you can lower it to 85, you are going to save an average of $13,000 to $16,250 just by having that smaller wedding. And that does not even take into account that a lower guest count also opens up many more options for venues that might cost a lot less money. My wife and I had 84 guests at our wedding, and I'm so glad that we kept it at that size, not only for budget sake, but a smaller guest list also allowed us to spend a lot more quality time with everyone who was there. So if you're looking to do something that will save you the most amount of money, keep the guest list as small as you possibly can. It will literally save you thousands of dollars. And a bonus tip to save you a lot of money and a ton of time is to use free AI tools when planning your wedding. We put together an entire video showing you how to use free tools like ChatGPT and Google Gemini to plan almost every part of your wedding. You will not believe how many practical ways these free tools can save you both money and time. That video link is pinned to the top of the comments below, and we also put a link in the description.